Singapore's COVID-19 circuit breaker has been extended by about a month to the 1st of June as the country continues to grapple with the coronavirus pandemic. Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong has announced the extension of the strict safe distancing measures in a televised address to the nation. Existing measures will also be tightened for the next two weeks. Mr Lee also says Singapore is keeping a close eye on the situation among migrant workers, calling it a serious problem. Singapore is on day 15 of its circuit breaker. Guadalajara with more. So far, cases in the community have fallen to below 30 a day, which Prime Minister Lee Sen Long says is a sign the circuit breaker is taking effect. Still, he said there could be a hidden reservoir of undetected community cases because unlinked cases are not going down. On Monday, the health ministry said that there have been an average of 20 such unlinked cases daily for the past two weeks. The aim is to bring daily cases down to single digits or near zero. To do so, existing measures will also be tightened. More workplaces will be shut, with only the most essential services to remain open. Meanwhile, entry to hot spots like wet markets will also be restricted to thin out crowds even more. Mr. Lee also urged Singaporeans to go out alone for errands and not with family members during the lengthened circuit breaker period. Many will be disappointed by the extension of the circuit breaker, especially our businesses and workers who are hurting greatly. But I hope you understand that this short-term pain is to stamp out the virus, protect the health and safety of our loved ones and allow us to revive our economy. The government will continue to help our businesses and workers cope during the extended circuit breaker period. We will provide the same level of support to workers and businesses as we are doing now. Mr Lee said delaying the deadline can also help contain any spillover from the migrant worker dormitories, if it happens. Right now, these workers form more than 70% of Singapore's cases, which crossed 9,000 on Tuesday. In the meantime, he said more medical resources will be sent to such dorms to ensure timely treatment. Older workers who are more vulnerable have also been moved to separate dorms for closer monitoring. Still, Mr. Lee noted dorm clusters have remained largely contained and haven't spread to the wider community. Most of these cases also showed mild symptoms. To our migrant workers, let me emphasize again. We will care for you just like we care for Singaporeans. We thank you for your cooperation during this difficult period. We will look after your health your welfare and your livelihood. We will work with your employers to make sure that you get paid and that you can send money home. And we will help you stay in touch with friends and family. Mr Lee said Singapore will need to do three things to exit from the circuit breaker. First, it must open up incrementally, making sure the country is safe at every step. Reopening prematurely could mean infections return, which might call for a second round of circuit breaker measures. Next, he said testing must be scaled up substantially to quickly detect new cases. To do that, Mr Lee said the country is procuring test kits from overseas and also making its own. Lastly, Mr Lee said Singapore will also need to make use of technology for contact tracing, urging the public to download the Trace Together app, even as it is developing other apps to do so. I know this has not been an easy time for everyone. We are making progress, but we have not yet succeeded by a long way. The results do show that the circuit breaker is working. Now, we all need to do a little bit more. Make best use of the next two weeks of the Titan circuit breaker and the four weeks of the extension beyond that. I ask for your support and cooperation. I ask for your trust and confidence. Let us go all out to beat the virus and break the chain of transmission. We will overcome this together. Thank you. The multi-ministry task force has announced specific details of the latest measures. Cheryl Goh joins us now for more on this. Uh, Cheryl, what can people in Singapore expect in the coming days in terms of what we can and can't do? 
Well, well, Steve, going solo is really the name of the game as the circuit breaker has been extended to June. If you need to leave your house to buy essentials or to exercise, the task force has strongly urged the public to now do this alone and not make it a family outing. There will also be staggered entry to selected wet markets based on IC number. Uh, for a start, these are for the more popular ones that still see a substantial crowd, and four of such markets have been singled out. They are Gelang Surai Market, Block 104-105 Yishun Ring Road, uh, also known as Chongpang Market, Block 2021 Marsling Lane, and Block 505 Jurong West Street 52. So how it works is that those whose IC's last digit ends with an even number can only visit these markets on the even dates of the month. And conversely, those with an odd last digit can only visit these markets on the odd dates of the month. Now the task force said this is because because unlinked cases in the community have gone down, but not fast enough. We cannot be complacent, and this is the time now to continue to hunker down and give this a further push. So first, we call on everyone to do their part to minimize movement. Remember, the virus spreads through people, through our contacts with others, and when we go out and touch surfaces, and then our hands touch our faces. Yes, we can take precautions like safe distancing and wearing of masks, but the best way to beat the virus is to stay home. So if you need to go out to buy food, to buy groceries, go out alone. Don't turn this into an occasion for a family outing. And if you need to go out to exercise, exercise alone and in your own neighbourhood. Don't travel out to exercise. So we call on everyone to do this because it is the best way to protect yourselves and your family members. More financial help is also on the way for those affected by the extended circuit breaker. Deputy Prime Minister and Finance Minister Heng Sui Kiet said key support measures in the solidarity budget will be extended in the month of May. This includes a 75% wage subsidy under the job support scheme to all sectors so as to encourage employers to retain their workers and tap on grants for training and skills upgrading during this period. I will further enhance the job support scheme to include certain groups of shareholder directors. These are employees of a company who are also shareholders and directors and who missed out on both the job support scheme and the self-employed income relief schemes. I also waive the foreign worker levy due in May and provide employers with another $750 in foreign workers levy rebates for every foreign worker in employment. Families whose breadwinners have lost their jobs can apply for the COVID-19 support grant from 1st May 2020 and the Temporary Relief Fund. The extension of the solidarity budget will cost $3.8 billion. Well, Cheryl, the key concern for Singapore is the situation in the foreign worker dormitories. What's the update there? Yes, so Glenda, Manpower Minister Joseph Ventura said containment and testing efforts in the dorms continue and so far 10,000 essential workers have been transferred out of these dorms to be housed elsewhere. Mr. Chair also added that it is through contact tracing that there was found to be transmission at common construction work sites which may have contributed to the increase in the numbers of infected workers. We will now require all the workers staying in all the dormitories to stop going to work. This was something that we had planned for and now we are going to implement it. Now this new condition applies to workers from all companies, including those that have earlier obtained exemption to operate, but which MTI will now notify to suspend operations for this period. We know that there are going to be some adjustments to be made by the companies, but we seek the cooperation of both the employers and the workers on this new condition. It is a necessary measure.
to minimize the risk of transmissions. Mrs. Chair also added that with Ramadan round the corner, efforts have been taken to ensure Muslim workers are well taken care of. The task force is working with caterers and dorm operators to provide pre-dawn and breakfast meals for the workers. It has also translated the MUIS Ramadan Guide on the Religious Observations to take into account safe distancing measures. And this will provide guidance for the dorm operators on how to facilitate Ramadan religious practices. It's back to you in the studio. All right, thanks for that, Cheryl.